I hiccuped, okay. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, Patronosaurus Reads. I'm Katie, aka Patronosaurus, and I read. It's a new angle, because we're on my cell phone, because we're vlogging. Haven't done that in a while, right? So this weekend, the hosts of the Contemporary-a-thon are hosting a mini weekend Contemporary-a-thon. Um, so that's Chelsea from Chelsea Darling Reads, Natasha from My Reading is Odd, and Julie from Pages and Pens. So I saw Chelsea's announcement video a couple days ago, and I was like, sure, I'll do that. Like, it's a long weekend. Like, my entire life doesn't feel like a long weekend. Um, but I, I am still working. I've just been working from home, so it truly is a long weekend for me. So I get to not work on Monday. So it's Friday, May 22nd. And Contemporary Thon starts today. Um, so I have been reading The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. I'm like probably 75-ish percent of the way done. So I'm pretty close to being done with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish that. Um, it is 6.51 in the morning. I usually start work around 8. Um, because I'm working from home, like my boss has been really great about kind of letting me have a flexible schedule. So I'm probably going to read that before I start work. At 7 45 8 o'clock and then there are some prompts for contemporary thon which i'm sort of going to try to get to so the prompts are they always choose a color for a book that you should read and they all had like a lot of peachy books which i don't really have at least ones that i haven't read yet so they said you could also do like pink or orange like whatever really works like it's a weekend readathon like who really cares like they're not gonna arrest me if i don't read a peach book so I think I'm going to be reading Tweet Cute by whoever the author is. I will put the cover on the screen because I don't have a physical copy. I got an ARC forever ago uh, and the book actually came out in January. So I think what I'm going to do is listen to the audiobook while I'm working, um, while I can, when I have some like sort of mindless things to do. And that will maybe power me through the whole day because I usually listen at double speed and contemporaries are not super long. I've been doing that for the last couple weeks. Like I had the light bulb moment of, oh my God, I can be listening to audiobooks during work. So I've been doing that a lot. Um, and then the next prompt is to read a book under 250 pages. And I was like, what am I going to read for that? And then I remembered Add Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell. So this is like just over 200 pages, I believe, and it's a graphic novel. So I'll be reading that as well. And then the third prompt was to read a book that you think will be fun. So I'm going to count Tweet Cute for that as well. Um, so that's pretty much the weekend. I also pulled out um, Not the Girls You're Looking For by Amina May Safi. So that's an option. Let's just... There's my TV. Hello. Let's look at some other books that I have. I have um, this book. I have an arc of Out Now that came out um, this week. It came out on Tuesday. And I didn't read it, uh, but it's not too far after publication date, so I could read this. I think it's mostly contemporary. I remember from All Out, um, which this is sort of like the sequel to All Out. So All Out was historical anthology of queer romances, and then this is like contemporary. But I remember All Out had at least one story that was sort of like fantastical fantasy, whatever. I don't know if this has anything like that as well. Oh, it says vampires, aliens. Okay, maybe I can't count this. Whatever, it's my readathon. Who cares? What else do I have? I don't have like a lot of contemporary that I haven't read yet. I have knocking things off my bookshelf. I've asked the passengers by A.S. King. I think this is mostly contemporary-ish. Um, Kayla from Books and Lala. A.S. King is like her favorite author. So she posted a guide to A.S. King video that I haven't watched yet. So maybe I will watch that and see. Oh, don't look at my trash can. Gross. No. Um, maybe I will watch that video to see if that's going to be a good fit or not. I think that's pretty much going to be my TBR. Um, I've also been wanting to read Girls on the Verge, which is a book about... Um, a girl who has to kind of make a road trip in order to get an abortion. And it also has like a peachy pink cover, but it wouldn't have double counted for the book that I think is going to be fun because I think it's going to be good, but I don't know that it's going to be fun because it sounds like more of a hard hitting contemporary. And the audiobook for that is on script, so I may be playing with that this weekend too. Who knows what I'm doing? I also have to film this weekend because I've been really behind on filming. It's just going to be like a time. So it's 
now 6 55 um, i'm gonna go ahead and read for probably about an hour maybe make myself some breakfast maybe you will see that and some coffee i bought coffee when do i drink coffee never <sighs> quarantine is doing weird things to me man okay talk to you guys in a little bit I don't always put hot sauce on my breakfast sandwiches, but I was just vibing with it this morning. And then this is my coffee. Um, I don't drink regular coffee and I hardly ever drink iced coffee, um, but I've been watching this YouTuber in all of her vlogs, she, um, I'm gonna put the top of the bagel on there. Um, in all of her vlogs, she makes iced coffee, like she buys pre-made iced coffee. Normally it's just the coffee. And then she adds in her own like almond milk and cream and sugar and whatever. Um, but they were out of stock of just plain coffee at the grocery store. So I got this pre-mixed one instead. We'll see how I like it. Maybe I'm finally becoming an adult and drinking coffee. All right, here is my coffee. Uh, it's from this pizza place. This cup is from a pizza place in my college town. Because uh, I don't own regular glasses. That's on my to-do list. But let's... A very strong vanilla taste, but also a very strong coffee taste. Yeah, I would have preferred to mix my own and have the ratios be how I like it, but this is okay. It'll do me for now. Maybe I'm a coffee drinker now. I don't know what's happening. All right, folks, it is 8 a.m. It's time for me to get to work. I have TweetCute downloaded on my phone, ready to go. I'm gonna listen to the audiobook while I'm working. It's just over 10 hours long and I listen at double speed so I might finish it all during the workday today. And if I don't, I think I will finish it before I go to bed. So that's exciting. I only read like a chapter of Wedding Date because I was eating and watching an episode of Community. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So. I'll check in with you guys probably at lunchtime. Update. My stomach hurts, which is why I don't drink coffee. Mistakes were made. It tastes fine, but it's just like, it hurts me. It's not, it's not worth it. And now I have this whole carton of coffee that I guess I'm gonna have to drink at some point. <sighs> why do I do things to myself? Anyway, okay, so I'm also a little bit into Tweet Cute. <laughs> and uh, part of the premise is that there's this app at their school um, that was like created so that people can talk anonymously and the school has banned it because they're like, people are cheating, using this app to cheat on their schoolwork because they go to like this fancy like college prep school or whatever, <laughs> which a school would never do. Like, that's so implausible to me. Like, how could you possibly enforce students not using a specific app on their phone, especially if it's not like illegal? Like they, you could not feasibly do that. Like if they, if a school tried to do that, like if they tried to ban Twitter or something, like straight up, I think there could potentially be a lawsuit um, for violating First Amendment rights no joke so already i'm like this is so not possible i'm like five chapters in so like nothing has really happened yet but i'm like from someone with a background in education i'm like this would never happen granted i've never worked at like a super fancy college prep school so maybe that's the kind of thing that happens there but i i really don't see that being a thing that just sounds ridiculous hello everyone it is many hours later. It's 1.45. I'm just now eating lunch because I had that stomach ache because of coffee. Why do I do things to myself? Um, but I wanted to show you a fun thing. So I ordered um, a onesie from MeUndies. This is not sponsored in any way, although MeUndies, if you ever want to sponsor me, I would love it because I love your products. They're so good. Um, and they had a sale on onesies that were half off last week. So I got this one. 
that has lightsabers on it and it says Star Wars and it came in a bag that has the Death Star on it. Like what? Oh, so cool. Um, so that's what I did. I ran out and got my mail and had that and I was really excited. Um, so now I'm going to eat something that will hopefully not upset my stomach. And then I, when I come back from lunch, honestly, I will only have like an hour, hour and a half left in my day and then I'll be done with work. I'm about 65% of the way through um, Tweet Q. I really like it so far. It's really good. I'm waiting for like the big reveal to happen where they like actually figure out, it's kind of like a secret identity, like mistaken identity type thing. And it, it's gonna come to a head soon and I'm like, gonna be so good so it's good morning so far it's not morning it's almost 2 p.m i'm gonna eat and read it's gonna be great hello friends it's the end of the day it's 5 p.m i was just outside because i had to go to the grocery store i had to purchase that which is worth its weight in gold toilet paper i saw somebody on twitter like post a picture of like a full shelf of toilet paper and they were like the world has returned to its natural state but apparently balance has not come here because they didn't have that much but I was able to get some and I picked up a couple of other things I was like I'm already at Walmart so I bought some chicken which is impossible to get a hold of again I bought the last package of chicken like there was no other chicken breast just just what I got but I got it so I can make this curry that I've had for a while, probably meal prep that sometime this weekend. And I bought um, a camping chair because I don't have any patio furniture, even though I have like a pretty nice patio, but I didn't want to spend money on like a full set. So I bought a camping chair that has, it comes with a footrest, like bougie as fuck. So I have that and I bought a yoga mat. And then because I have a sickness, I bought some books that I don't need. So we all saw how I'm reading the wedding date this weekend. I decided to go ahead and pick up The Proposal, also by Jasmine Guillory. It's like set in the same universe, a companion series of books. Um, and then I bought The Bromance Book Club, which I have heard nothing but good things about. Um, and again, it's like Chelsea Dowling, I take her word as gospel. Like anything that she likes, I'm probably going to like it too. Um, I know that she doesn't really like fantasy, but other than that, like our contemporary taste is very, very similar. So she really likes his books. So I was like, yeah, okay. It's at Walmart. I guess I'll buy it. Self-control. Who is she? So I may end up reading one or both of those this weekend. I feel like I just have so much time stretched ahead of me to do like whatever I want. I'm so close to the end of Tweet Q. I have less than an hour left in the audiobook. So I think I'm going to listen to that tonight, um, edit a video and hopefully get that up tonight. It's a massive wrap up of all the books that I read in February, March, and April swear to god if you don't see that video before this video like i'm just losing it i'm hoping to finish getting it edited tonight and just like upload it tonight and then this video will probably go up sometime next week who knows what will happen i don't know anything i'm just gonna keep reading and i'll let you know my thoughts on tweet cute once i finish it hello friends here's my onesie i didn't show you it is now almost 3 p.m on saturday I didn't do all the things that I said I was going to do last night. I didn't finish a book. I didn't edit. I didn't do shit. I'm just like not vibing with it. I needed to sleep. But yeah, here's my uh, here's my lightsabers. It says Star Wars on it too in certain places, but I don't think you can see. Um, but this morning I did finish the audiobook for Tweet Cute. So here's my thoughts. I liked it. It was indeed cute and Tweety. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, there were some re unrealistic aspects, like I mentioned earlier, um, but overall I thought it was fun. It was a good time. Um, so I think I'm going to set up my camping chair outside and read for a little bit, hopefully finish the wedding date. Um, it's supposed to rain a little bit later, but I'm hoping that I can finish my book before it starts raining. All right, here's my little, um, camping chair with a headrest, a footrest, and a book. I'm ready to go. Hello, I just finished the wedding date and I really liked it. 
Um, sorry, I feel like I'm talking kind of quiet because I don't know if my um, if my landlords are like outside in their backyard because it's like really close to here. Um, yeah, this was really good. It had obviously like really cute romance stuff. Like there's a reason it's a bestseller. Um, also tell me why the silhouette of the guy on the front of this book looks like um, Shane Madej from BuzzFeed Unsolved. Literally looks exactly like him. Like <laughs> what is this? Um, anyway, so something that was really interesting about this book is that it's an interracial couple. Um, Alexa is a black woman, Andrew is a white guy. And there were a lot of really interesting conversations without being like really heavy handed about that sort of relationship dynamic and how um, Alexa is used to being the only black person in a room and um, Drew's eyes kind of being opened up to a lot of things that he'd never really noticed before and being able to like step up and speak out against inequality and people being like weird and gross and saying inappropriate things to Alexa. Um, so I really like that. I think I'm like too lazy to do half star ratings. So I, I, I feel like it's a 3.5, but I'm going to like really say it's a four. Honestly, I was expecting the writing style to really blow me away because it's such a crazy bestseller and it wasn't like it was just kind of average. Um, but the story itself was really good. So I think I'm going to say four stars. So it's two books down for the weekend. I think I'm going to jump into Pumpkinheads next because um, that's like a really quick graphic novel. I'm not sure if I'm going to stay outside or not. It's a little warm. Like this onesie is a pretty lightweight material. So I thought I wouldn't be hot, but I am. So I might um go inside and keep reading or not be lazy and just like stay outside and relax it's so nice there's so many birds chirping i don't know if you guys can hear them but like i mean i live in like the middle of nowhere so there's animal sounds all the time everywhere and the birds while kind of annoying when i'm inside if they're super loud it's really nice when i'm outside to have like this ambient noise hi friends i decided to move into my bedroom to keep reading because it's getting a little toasty outside. I read all pumpkin heads super fast, like maybe 45 minutes, maybe. And I loved it, it's perfect, five stars. It's <laughs> so cute, it's about, uh, oh, there's my copy of Crooked Kingdom, which I'm not reading this weekend because it's contemporary thought. Um, it's about these two teenagers that work in a pumpkin patch and it's their senior year of high school, so they're not gonna come back in the future or for at least four years. <laughs> so they're kind of trying to live it up the last night in the pumpkin patch and check off their like, pumpkin patch bucket list items. It was very interesting because their pumpkin patch is like a fair, like on like fairgrounds and there's like big old mazes and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of food. And at least the pumpkin patches that I've been to are not really like that. It's like you have maybe a food stand and then like pumpkins and that's it. And it's like an event there. And I think that's based off of the real pumpkin patches that Rainbow Rowell has gone to in Nebraska like she said something in the like notes at the end that like Nebraska has the best pumpkin patches and I'm like well I guess I need to go to Nebraska because <laughs> that sounds really fun it sounds so fun I love fall things um this just makes me wish that summer was over and it was already fall and it's time for me to go to a pumpkin patch and a haunted house and all the other fun fall things so this is very good I liked it a lot I don't know what to read next I'm gonna like look over my options and um check in with y'all in a little bit I think okay hi so after much thought and deliberation um I realized I'm getting a little burnout on like these pretty light fluffy contemporaries so I think now I'm gonna read a mystery um it's called The Apartment by K.L. Slater I'll put in a picture of the cover because I have a digital arc of it but it actually came out about a month ago like three weeks ago so I should probably get on that uh, my arc approval rating is trash um so i'm also kind of trying to fix that so i may focus more the rest of this weekend on arcs but i also have like more physical books that i want to read so we'll just kind of see what my mood is um but as long as it's a mystery in the real world in modern times it's still a contemporary so uh i think that's what i'm gonna be reading probably for the rest of the night i usually blow through mystery thriller type books pretty quickly the description of this book from what i remember from when I requested it many, many months ago. It sounds kind of similar to um, Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, which is my favorite Riley Sager book. It was really, really good. And it takes a lot for me to give a mystery thriller book five stars, and I think I did with that one. And it might be the only one that I have given five stars to because it was that good. 
So let's hope that this book keeps going in that vein. Hello friends, happy Sunday. I'm back out on my porch. I uh, did start the apartment last night and I read a little bit more of it this morning, so I'm about 30% of the way through. Um, according to Goodreads, it's only like 260 some pages. So I don't feel like it should take me too much longer to finish. I, I feel like it'll move pretty quick. Um, as I predicted, it's at least the general premise is pretty similar to Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. It's um, this woman who has been going through some life circumstances and she has to move and like the perfect apartment just happens to fall in her lap and it sounds too good to be true, which is exactly the general premise of Lock Every Door. Um, but some of the details so far are different. Um, it's one of those things where as the reader, it's like, this is obviously a dumb decision for you to like follow through with these people who you don't know. Uh, but also that's why we read mystery books. So it's like, well, if we wanted them to make realistic decisions and not get themselves in stupid situations, then we wouldn't read these books. Um, in this particular book, the, uh, the like life circumstance that happened that is causing her to move is that her husband died. So she and her daughter can't afford to live. That was a fly. Um, she and her, she and her daughter can't afford to live in their house anymore. Um, but also the husband left her, which is, they don't actually say until several chapters in. So it's like pretty quickly introduced. Yes, the husband died. And then like five chapters later, it's also like, oh, but before he died, he left me for this other woman. He left our family. And I'm like, that feels like a, such a weird, like gotcha thing from the author to be like, you thought the husband died, but actually he was a piece of shit who left his family. Like, why would you not just say that? Like, I don't understand from the character's internal monologue perspective, why she would not have also been thinking not only about his death, but also about him leaving them at the same time. Like that just doesn't make sense. It, it really feels a little bit contrived from the author um, to just be like, ha, you losers, you thought it was one thing, but actually it's two things. Like, I don't know why you would do that. So I hope this book doesn't have any more of those like cheap shots. I hope that was the only one and the actual plot of it will be good. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my porch on Monday at like 4 p.m. Uh, so sorry I haven't been updating, but I just had kind of a slow start to my day this morning. Like, I kind of just wanted to chill. So I'm going to update you on what I read yesterday because I actually have uh, started and finished a whole other book since I last updated you, which was um, Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. The audiobook was on script, so I decided to go ahead and pick it up. Um, I've listened to enough audiobooks from Elizabeth Acevedo to know that I can listen to them super fast uh, because she speaks pretty slowly. So it's already written in verse. The audiobook was already only like five and a half hours long and I listened to it for the most part on three times speed. So I finished it in like two hours. Awesome. Um, it was pretty good. I think I'm gonna give it three stars. Um, if you're uh, unaware, haven't heard of this book before, it's about two girls whose father dies in a plane crash but they're from two separate families and they didn't know that each other existed. So one lives in New York City and the other lives in the Dominican Republic. And so following his death is when they actually learn of each other's existence and, um, you know, get to know each other in the midst of grieving. And I really wish that they had gotten together sooner in the book. Um, they were not together as much as I would have liked and their relationship as sisters didn't grow as much as I wanted it to. Um, it felt like things moved very quickly once they actually met each other. Um, and I just would have loved to like sit in that moment a little bit longer and actually like see more interactions between them. So unfortunately, this is my least favorite Elizabeth Acevedo book. I've read all of her books now, which is kind of weird. Um, there's not a lot of authors that I've read all of their books, even if they only have three like she does. Um, but I think this one is just not quite my favorite and I had high hopes for it. Like I think it had the coolest concept out of all of them. Uh, for me, like the one that interested me the most, but in execution, I didn't like it the best. And then I also started The Burman's Book Club by Lisa K. Adams, um, which if you recall, 
you probably do because I'm sure in the vlog it was like maybe 10 minutes ago I bought this at Walmart the other day. I'm only about 50 pages in but I'm loving it so far. Um, it's hilarious but also very wholesome the way that these men talk about toxic masculinity. Um, this book is about um, a group of men who create a book club in order to read romance books so that they can understand women better and like be better partners and husbands to them and so this is following um, a man whose marriage is actually almost over um, and so he's trying to win his wife back by reading these romance books and it's very funny but also wholesome like listening to these men talk, talk about um, toxic masculinity and like how it affects their behavior and why they enjoy reading these books that are written by women for women. It's just delightful. Um, so I'm hoping to finish this before the end of the day today and then that'll be six books in four days. Granted, I started the wedding date before the weekend started, so really five full books in four days, but still, that's a lot of books. So I'll let you guys know how this goes. Um, I'm probably just gonna spend the rest of the evening reading. I have Dungeons and Dragons tonight, so I'm hoping to finish this or get very close to finishing it before we play which means I kind of need to get down to business. Hi everyone. I moved inside after like 10 minutes because it's almost 90 degrees here, which I didn't realize when I first went outside. So I decided to come inside. I read a little bit more. I'm now about halfway through, which is awesome. Maybe I'll finish it tonight. Um, I took a break to make some dinner. Um, I'm making curry from like a pre-mixed Thing. I've had one before that was Indian style and now I'm trying a Thai style. It smells really good. So now I'm letting that simmer and once it's ready, I'll eat. So before then, I'll just keep reading my book. I'm pretty excited. I'm really loving this. Um, one thing is I really hope there's a turning point soon where the wife actually starts like being receptive to his efforts of like trying to get her back because right now she's still like pretty upset with him for a good reason like you know they have problems for a reason but I'm really hoping that there's a turning point soon because it's starting to feel a little um repetitive that he keeps on trying things and she keeps on pushing him away and I'm like no please love each other again I, I want you guys to love each other so I feel like given what I know about romance books it's probably gonna happen in like the next chapter um but that's one thing where it's starting to feel a little slow but I could see it being totally fine as long as that next like plot point happens pretty soon okay Loki this book has me kind of emotional um just like the way that they describe um Thea and Gavin's past and their previous relationship and like their baggage that comes from their lives before they even met each other and then like how things sort of fell apart and then the way that like they both want to get back together but like there's stuff in the way it it's like kid me a little bit like I'm not full-on crying I don't think very many romance books would ever make me do that but I was kind of tearing up a little bit uh at a moment there <sighs> I noticed um sorry I haven't said anything the past few clips have been loud because of the air conditioning and that's just how it's going to be because like I said it's almost 90 degrees here. So shitty audio quality is gonna happen so I don't feel like I'm dying. Here's my finished product. Mmm, tasty. Sorry it's a little messed up and also my lipstick is like, what even is it? I've already tried a little bit. Um, but here's your dumbass Katie moment of the day. Um, the recipe called for five cups of rice. So I made, no, four cups. <laughs> Either way, I made four cups of rice, but it wanted four cups of cooked rice, which is really like two cups when you measure it before you cook because it soaks up all the water and gets bigger. So I cooked four cups of rice, which yields like nine cups of rice. So I have way too much rice. Um, the sauce to rice ratio is off. So I'll probably have to add some extra sauce like sriracha or um, soy sauce or something just so that things have flavor. But it's still really good. I'm just stupid so that's fun okay I'm gonna eat and read hi everyone it is 
much later. It is now just past 11. Um, d d went a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. We started at 8.30 and we just ended. Um, so I don't think I'm going to have time to finish reading the uh, Bromance Book Club before it's midnight and the contemporary -thon is officially over because I'm very tired and I want to go to bed. <laughs> so I thought I would give you my final wrap up thoughts. Um, obviously you saw a lot of my thoughts as I was reading, but just to recap, I read five books this weekend. Four of them I read from start to finish and one of them I started before the weekend and I just finished it. So I read Tweet Cute by Emma Lord, which I gave four stars to. I read The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory, which I also gave four stars to. I read Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell, which I gave five stars to. I read The Apartment by Kale Slater, which was garbage. I don't even remember if I updated you on how bad it was, but it was like really bad. If you're looking for a book with that premise, just read Lock Every Door. Just read that one because that's so good. And the apartment was really bad. Like, don't waste your time. That was two stars. Did I already say that? I don't even know. I'm losing it. And then I read Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, which was three stars. So overall, I would say a pretty good reading weekend. Um, and I can definitely see the Bromance Book Club being four or even five stars, depending on how the end of it is. I'm about two thirds of the way through, so I'll probably finish it tomorrow. Um, and you'll see in my May wrap up what my final thoughts were. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me this weekend. I had a lot of fun. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books, what you think I should read next. Uh, like I said, um, when I impulsively bought some books from Walmart, I do have The Proposal by Jasmine Guillory, so I might jump into that next. Um, it's like sort of a sequel companion novel to The Wedding Date following um, a different side character from The Wedding Date. So I might just go ahead and get on that because I really like that book. So, all right, I'm tired. I'm going to take off my makeup and go to bed. I'm so excited. Oh, thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe. That's what YouTubers say. See you guys next time. Bye.